What is up, everybody? It's your favorite Fox. Foxy here. Uh, we're here with another little community spotlight stream. It's been a long time since we've done one of those. Um, we've got a couple of people on the mic here. Oh my god, that mic is loud. Uh, we've got a couple of people on the mic here. Uh, we've got our one of our favorite organizers, Zale. Say hello to everyone, Zale. Hey everyone, it's Zale. I was muted for like a second. <laughs> uh, we got our boy Rich Jammer here as well. Say hi, Rich. Hello. What's up? And the man of the hour, the, the floof moose himself, Enma. Enma Dare. Hi, man. Hi. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Hopefully everyone's having a great day today. Uh... Nobody's saying that anything is quiet, so I think we're good to go. While we do this stream, we're also going to have a, a game of Scriblio going on in the background, just to, just to have some fun things going on. I know we usually used to do uh, Aggie IO, but that was a little complicated for people to get in on. So this should be a little bit more of a fun time. I think it kind of goes without saying, but with your guesses that are incorrect, let's try to keep it PG. Um, uh, I don't think I have to worry about <laughs> you guys with that, though. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you want to go ahead and start the game, uh, sure I thing. can get started with a couple of questions. Uh, yeah, I'm just choosing uh, the Flutter Toll says they would like to join. Um, you can just join, can't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, um, if you're yeah. in the Fight and Fanatic server, actually, I can go ahead and uh, put the link into the stream chat as well. For people who yeah. want to hop in, um, uh, so Dem is drawing right now. Oh yeah. All right. So I put the link in the chat, but with that aside, we can get started. That better not be what I think it is. Oh no, never mind. Um, <laughs> it's not latch. That word is in there though. Oh, that is? word is in there. Okay. okay. Yeah. But. While that happens, uh, I have, of course, as an interview usually goes, I have a couple of questions for you, Enma. Uh, first mm -hmm. off, we, we didn't really... Wait, no, that's not it. Um, so, introduce yourself. Who are you? Um, yeah. Well, I am Enma. I'm, um, <laughs> I guess most of you know me as a streamer or an artist. I'm a musician and I'm a sound designer. And I play a lot of them fighting herds. <laughs> I don't know. I live in Mexico, and uh, I don't know what else you guys would like to know. Um, what you're a sound designer? I actually didn't know yes. that. Yes, I I've done work for a couple of games. Um, some of them I can't disclose. Uh, the one I I'm really happy about is I worked on Tempest, which is uh, an Atari IP, like classic Atari IP. And they were really, really protective about their games. So I'm really, like, happy that I got to work on that. Bro. <laughs> oh, donkey. Oh, my God. That was a D, not a P. Um, oh, so you actually work on games. Well, that kills one of the questions I was going to ask you. Um, I actually didn't know that you were a sound designer. Um... But yeah, I, I know that you do art and music and streaming, and I also know that you do yes. a little video, a little bit of a video editing from one of the yes. things that I saw on the Arizona channel. Um, uh huh. Do you... <laughs> I don't know why you saw, but okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you probably saw the the bovine forklift video. The forklift, forklift. I was gonna call it the elevator. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have a, a preferred method of uh, making content? Something that you like a lot? Uh, I. You mean like if I prefer to do art or music or? Uh, yeah. I that's weird. Um, not really. Like I enjoy all of it. I go through like phases where like so I get really into like art for like a couple months, and then I get really into music, and then I get really into like video, and it just like cycles. Okay. I was actually gonna ask. Um how you divvy up your time between that sort of thing because i know there are a bunch of people i, I yeah. know for the creative types uh for people mm -hmm. who like drawing and then people who like music and people who just like everything and they want to get into mm -hmm. everything 
um yeah. it's a little bit hard to uh come up with the time to make sure that you're skilled or at least enjoying everything that you do what is that oh my god i don't know <laughs> no yeah it is um oh. i mean it's it, it gets really hard like i don't know how real i'm 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 should get in here but like uh, i do get sometimes really like depressed about that kind of stuff because like it's it's i don't get enough time there's not enough time to do all the things right right <laughs> and I... then when i get really into something um i stop doing the other thing and then when i try to do the other thing i'm super rusty and i just makes me feel really fucking awful about it. oh shit I shouldn't be cursing here. Oh, it makes yeah. me feel uh, really awful. Yeah, okay. I know that. I know that. I'm no, uh, it's, sorry. It's all good. It, we we let it slip at, at least once or twice. Don't worry. Um. Yeah. Um. So like, no. Uh, yeah. Coming fun. up with the time is out, really dude. really hard. I wish I wish I was more like able to like organize my time in a way where I can like do all the things, but. I'm I'm not very like good with that. I mean, from what I've seen of all the uh, of all the things that like I saw of your gallery while I was getting ready for this little stream, um, mm -hmm. you seem to be really good at the things that. Oh wow! I'm good enough that everybody got it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you seem to be really, really good at all the things that you do. I've seen uh, a couple of your music covers. I remember um, you did, a, I think it was a kazoo version of Arizona's theme. Yeah. Oh, my God. How do you even play kazoo? That was, like, like, really popular when it came out, actually. I was really surprised because even, like, the main six themselves and uh, Whitetail uh, commented on it. It was really good. Um, um, I really like that. Thank you. I enjoy working on that too. Um, <laughs> I really, really put like a. Little... It was really weird because um. A friend that that happened. The reason that happened was because a friend bought me a kazoo. And I'm like, you know what? I would love to do like something with a kazoo where I put the same amount of like, effort, that and polish that I put on anything else. Uh, that would be funny. Uh, and then uh, a couple days after that ha happened, uh, my sister had bought a ukulele, like one of those like crappy ones, like twenty dollar like toy ukuleles. Um, and the uh, the week before that, I had been learning the Arizona song, like Sunset Prairie. And I'm like, hmm, you know what? Like a ukulele and kazoo like version of Arizona sounds a pretty thing would be funny so i just like i literally woke up i learned how to play the ukulele just for that um and i recorded it in like a couple hours in, in that morning oh i I'm, I'm sorry are you telling me you learned how to play the ukulele in a day it was less than a day ukulele is really easy it's because i'm a guitarist and the ukulele is basically like the guitar minus like a couple strings you can uh, conceptualize it just like the guitar fretboard. It's very similar. So, like, I was able to just figure it out really quick. Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh... And then after that happened, I actually, like, kind of fell in love with the ukulele. And, and I bought my own, but it's not a toy. It's, like, a real instrument. Uh... So I do have my own ukulele now as well. Um, how long... Uh, can I... You... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Rich. Go ahead. Yeah, like, uh... Since you're a sound designer and you're recording all these instruments, like I, I've been really interested recently in like microphones and all that. Like, just wondering what kind of equipment do you use to record these, uh, mm -hmm. like instruments and stuff, um, especially like record... kazoo and yeah, like especially like um... some of the weird instruments like kazoo. You know, like I, I know you could buy like certain things to record like guitars and all that, but I'm just wondering yeah. about. Like ukulele, ah, uh, not ukulele, um, like a kazoo. kazoo. Uh, well, whenever I need to record like something that's an acoustic instrument, like the ukulele or the kazoo or my voice or whatever, I just I have um, I have two microphones. I have a condenser microphone and I have a dynamic microphone. 
I think for that recording, I used my dynamic microphone for both of them. I have a Behringer U1, I think, or C1. I don't remember the specific model of it. Um, and I just connect that into my interface, my audio interface. I have an old M audio fast track, like the ex most, like the cheapest one. Cause I bought it when I was in college, when I was studying um, music and stuff. Um, I bought that. So I didn't have a lot of money. I'm still using that for my stream for everything I do music related. Mm. I literally just set up my microphone on the stand and just record it honestly uh recording the kazoo though if you if you want to know more about that was really funny was really weird um because like i don't know if you know how a kazoo is played but you basically just sing into it what's this sorry um so like i had my microphones like my microphones my head headphones on so i could listen to the track while i was recording it i guess singing it uh, with the kazoo but since i had my my headphones on i couldn't hear the kazoo itself so when i was recording that all i heard myself was me going doo -doo 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 -doo, <laughs> like that I, that's what i was hearing my own voice just doing that oh, so it was really weird and there were points during the recording when i didn't even know if the kazoo was actually working because i couldn't hear it or feel it at all it was really weird uh oh Wow, I got that before he even drew that. I am a god. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, okay, so just a little bit curious. You've, um... So I've seen a lot of covers and stuff that you've done. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially, like, the Velvet Synthoid cover and everything. Um, yeah. I, I sort of also want to know how it was to record that as well. But do you have mm -hmm. any uh musically related projects that you want to go for um like an album or something of your own original songs that you wanted to create i do have a bunch of original music on my youtube and a couple original tracks on spotify and bandcamp and whatever um when it comes to music it's i really like performing i really like playing instruments uh, I don't write music very often. I do have a bunch of, like, original music, like I already said. I don't really have any sort of, like, ideas for albums or anything. Um. Uh, I don't know. I actually, I don't think I have that many covers. I have, like, the Arizona song. I have the Velvet song. And I have, like, a piece by Bach. By what? And... Johann Sebastian Bach, like a piano piece that I recorded as well. I thought I thought it's pronounced Bach, Bach or ba Bach. I don't. Or Bach. Oh wait, is I it, think there's forget. like it's just a lot of discrepancies about how it's pronounced. I don't. Is it uh, B A C H? Of, yeah. Oh, uh, our our music teacher called it Bach. Yeah, like every everyone calls it different. <laughs> as somebody who studied like classical music, it's like yeah. Um. Speaking of types of music, do you have a uh, favorite genre? Uh, not really. I like everything. I think, like, my favorite genre is what I like. It's going to sound really pretentious, but it's what I, what I like to refer to as music. Like, musician's music. And it's, like, something I, I found out the more I study it, the more, like, I open my, my, um, my horizons about music. Is that... People who really like music and has, who like really get into music and study music, when they make music, it doesn't really have a genre. It's just like a mix of everything they like. And that's the music I like the most, like music that doesn't care about genres and just mixes everything. Um, I really like, for example, Thank You Scientist, which is like a weird mix of like funk, rock, prog. And like they have brass instruments and the singer sounds like Michael Jackson and... <laughs> It's this really cool, like, blend of stuff that I love. I'm not doing very well on the Scribblio right now, but it's because I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I'm not doing well on the Scribblio right now because I'm an idiot. <laughs> that did not uh, so, look like a uh, Quick question. You describe yourself more as, a, like, a artist for drawing and all that, or as a musician? I don't know. Um, 
I was actually thinking about that last night because I figured you guys would probably ask me that. <laughs> and I don't really know. Um, if you had asked me that three years ago, I would have said art. Because I was really, really doing like art. That was what I was doing the most. Um, but nowadays, I, I really don't know. When I started streaming, I kind of stopped doing art as much and music as well. I recently started getting back into music. Um, and I find it really frustrating, both music and art, because like, I'm super, super rusty in all of it. You know, it... Oh, let me not be dumb. Uh, it doesn't really feel like... I mean, it, it's all in the eye of the beholder, but I'm going to show off some of your art for a little bit since uh, we're transitioning over to that. Um, it does not feel like your art has gotten rusty in any sense. Um, even the stuff that you've recently come out with is, is super, super good. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who's looking at the stream right now is uh, can see a little gallery of Enmo's work. Oh, that Arizona thing is like one of my favorite things I've done I love recently. It. Oh, that's cute. I love it so much. Uh, um, I was I was looking back through your Tumblr and, and deciding which images mm. to put in, and there was an image similar to this with uh similar to that one with Arizona outside, mm. but it was These like a, are all masterpieces. The one with the coffee. Uh, I think I think if I were to, <laughs> I'd have so to go back silly. and find it. Show the Nisa pic. Um, oh, the Nisa is like the newest thing I've made. Oh, uh, hold up. Give it a moment, because I didn't know that you had drawn these. It's gonna trans. No. It's gonna transition back around to it in a little bit, but the ones with the glitter versions, like the I, I think that's a deer of some suit, some sort. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the uh, one with that's Trixie. like gold foil. Yeah. Gold foil. Uh, the one with Trixie, I love that one. I just, I, I literally stole a lot of that from the Trixie from like another piece I saw that I really, really liked. Um, mostly like the texture for her cape and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. I want to draw something like that. And it was also a picture of Trixie. Um. <laughs> These are super, super good. I. Thank you. But I mean, I think that's what I'm talking about when I say I'm rusty, though, because these two pictures are like older. And these two pictures are when I was more into like doing art more actively. I don't think I could. I could. I definitely can draw something like that nowadays, but it's going to take me like a lot of time and effort, which back then it wasn't. I mean, it, it took effort and time, but not in the same way. Like, it's really hard. Right, right. It's um right now. It's the process of just like coming back into it. Yeah, it's sorry, just checking of the rust. Yeah, sorry. I think Foxy, it's your turn for drawing on the scribbly. Oh, oh, <laughs> um, on the screen. Whoops. <laughs> uh oh. Um uh, you How did you cover <laughs> your uh, word on the stream? Because you need to cover the word on the stream name. Oh. Uh. Um, I just call it a free round since I'm the. Oh dang it! It's because I was the the only reason I was looking at the stream right now was because we were talking about the pictures and I wanted to know what pictures you were uh, referring to. Ah, uh, you're a little cheater then. I see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like my. Oh, it's my turn. Hold on. Actually, we'll give uh, Enma his moment for drawing. What? Interesting. Oh, Flutter got it. Who eats? Oh, okay. who eats that with chopsticks? <laughs> I've never seen anyone eat that with. Really? I, I, I have. I, I'm just too American. Well, I've seen some people eat it with chopsticks, but like, I tried it. It's not. It's not terrible. It's pretty nice. 
It's not terrible. It's but... not terrible, but it's not the best either. It's I have best. I eat um rice with chopsticks every now and then. I'd rather just eat it with a spoon. Yeah. I was actually eating uh eating rice with chopsticks yesterday. I was like, why do I please give me a I spoon? think it depends on the on the type of rice too, because like it's if it's more like um the rice that sticks together, it's really easy to eat it with chopsticks. Wow. Okay. Um But yeah, we were we were talking about how um it's a little harder for you to create pieces. Um does that affect you doing commissions in any way, shape, or form? Uh yeah. <laughs> of course it does. Uh, um It's it's uh it commissions have even when I'm like like how how would i say it even when i'm not rusty with art um commissions is something that always takes me it takes a lot of effort and like uh, it takes a lot out of me i guess i would say i can feel that but in the what is that oh my yeah what is this <laughs> What is that? Is that Bib Riven? Is that a favorite mascot? Yo, I'm so it's only confused. It's a three-letter word. Though. I am <laughs> absolutely dumbfounded here. I am too. I did Flutter Talk at it. I'm so confused. Oh, Ori. Ori. I'm so yeah, mad. What 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 is an Ori? Okay, it's uh <laughs> it's the character from the game Ori in the Blind Forest. You could actually choose your own words in this or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. This is 100% oh, yeah. custom words. Yeah, we uh really? we use Endem's uh, list of custom words and it's uh it's pretty nice. It has a lot of common words. The the main reason we use like, or I made like a list, is because like the default words in this version of Scriblio are kind of weird sometimes. Like sometimes like weird concepts that is like, how do you even draw this? So we just made our own list, uh, which includes mostly common stuff like clover, <laughs> uh, but also includes some like video game stuff and stuff like that as well. Yeah, it's not to the point where it's like you have to be in on something to, uh... No, because you also get to choose. It gives you three words to choose from anyway. Right. Uh... Man. I'm actually happy we have someone who's, uh, who's good at all the different types of media, because that's just like a, a ton of different questions I can ask. Um... Yeah, um... <laughs> I, I... I don't know. I always feel really weird about that. Like... I feel, I, I I always feel like imposter syndrome. Uh, I don't think I'm very good at either of the things I do. I, I think I'm decent at some of them. Uh, and it has a lot to do with the fact that I, I once saw this post on Tumblr that I think puts it into words really good. Um, I know and I've seen what good is like, and I'm not that. I know that I'm better than average but i also know that i'm not like actually super good because i've seen what good is have you, you ever know? and that's how like... i feel about most things i do like everything like be it video games or like art or anything have you ever uh, and i mean like, most um, if you choose a art... specific focus um that would help a bit yeah I, I was i was actually talking about that with somebody couple weeks ago how one of the reasons i think i'm not i i'm never gonna be able to get like actually really good at one specific thing is because i just do so many things I, and I it's that. it's hard to choose one because i enjoy i really really truly do enjoy um everything i do like i love doing art i love doing music i love doing video i love doing audio i love streaming i love like playing games and it's like, I can't really choose one. I, 
I hate. Why is this in the list? <laughs> why is this in the? Nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Which is like, it, it, I guess it also like the same thing happens on on my stream because like people come in and are like, oh, you're so good at valid and whatever, and give me like these really nice compliments, and it's like. On the one hand, I really appreciate it. On the other hand, I know what actual good velvets are like, and I'm not that. <laughs> or just like them finding her players in general. Mm. I I do. Is think... there anything you're not good at? <laughs> I don't think I'm good at anything. Like I personally don't think I'm that good at anything. I mean, I'd say you're above competent in uh, a lot of the things you're I doing. I agree with that. <laughs> 100%. I agree that, and also with Lamp Shop, I, like, I feel like when I say these things, people think I think I'm garbage, which it's not true. Like, I understand, and I do think that I'm, like, at least above average at most of the things I do. And I'm decent enough at a lot of them. Uh, but I also... I also know what actually good and great, like, people at all of the things I like are like, and I'm not that. Um, I mean, well, that doesn't mean I don't artists... think I, I, yeah. So, aren't sorry. most artists like that? Like, you, especially me, I'm like, oh, I go on art, I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> way better than what I can do. <laughs> well, yeah, but specifically with art, it was we're going back to that again, going back to the whole. Um, rusty thing um nowadays i find it really hard to do things that i like but if we go back three years i was drawing stuff that i really loved um and i wouldn't like really really be proud of stuff that i made nowadays i rarely like actually like the things i produce very rarely and it frustrates you, me to no end. I feel like I've lost a lot of like to... style. Sorry, do you do you normally compare yourself to like other artists a lot or when it comes to art? No. Um the one the, the thing I care the most about in any like sort of creative endeavor, I don't care about pleasing other people unless it's a commission. Um the only thing I care about is making something that I would consume. And meeting my own standards, which I guess admittedly are pretty high. <laughs> anyway, I, I do kind of get like the feeling like, oh, uh, I should probably stick on this to, uh, to get good at it. Because like me, I like to jump between certain projects. Like maybe I'm doing something on Adobe Illustrator mm -hmm. and like I see something cool on another mm -hmm. software, like yeah. uh, a character animator. And so my skills in uh, like illustrating will, will deteriorate, you know? Yeah, no, yeah, that's totally how I feel. Like I, I feel like my art has become really boring compared to what I was making like three years ago, for example. That's one of the things that really frustrates me. I feel like it's really bland. I feel like I feel like that's the the struggle of when it comes to dedicating yourself or splitting yourself between anything. Because um I I recently got a guitar lately and mm -hmm. that's a little bit of the reason I was kinda excited. What in the Bro, why is this in the list? What? <laughs> God. Um, how, how would you draw Microsoft Edge? Yikes. <laughs> yikes, let's not think about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I recently got a guitar, and I always mm -hmm. do art, and I, don't, I can't speak for everyone else, but I'm in the middle of school and everything. And mm -hmm. through all the things I've been doing, TFH has taken a backseat and fighting games in general have taken a backseat. So when I'm getting good at all the stuff that I like to do and then I get into a tournament and I go like 0-2 and, and I'm just like, oh man. I'd be better at TFH if I didn't have fun with everything else. 
It's a little low. Um, yeah. It's a, it's, I'd say it's a little frustrating, but it's actually very frustrating. So I feel like I can somewhat relate, relate to where you're coming from. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like I could be like actually really, really good at PFH if I really like focus on it. But it's like, do I want to? You know, because there's these other stuff that I want to use my time on as well. Honestly, um, this isn't me giving advice or anything, but just sharing my opinion. If doing like everything makes you happy, then like go for it. Uh, I I know a lot of people who just focus onto that one thing, and then that's just the. I swear to God. Oh wait. No. It's uh, not wait, what? There's no among this stuff in the list so I just be creative <laughs> oh wow i i'm horrible at spelling um actually uh how long have you been playing tfh i've been playing it since it came out in early access day one i've been playing it and streaming it since day one uh 20 2018 you've been with us yes it is it has been a long time we've come a long way yeah yeah for sure yep have you been playing velvet since the beginning or was it uh yes a switch? no oh. i i started with velvet oh. um i only more i started with velvet and then it got to a point where I was feeling like whenever like newbie players or whatever were challenging me, it was like kind of unfair. So I just started, I'm like, I'm going to play other characters against newbies. Um, so I started playing Paprika. And then she kind of became my secondary character. And then it also come, came to the point where like playing Paprika wasn't, in my view, fair. Oh, I know what this is. Against like newbies. So I started doing Arizona. And then I started playing all the characters. Because, I hate you. Um, <laughs> so like one of word? my one of my regular like viewers from my own community, uh, he would come in and he always wanted to do like randoms. So then it became like a normal thing that I would do just play random. So I kind of started picking up on how to play basically all the characters except Pum. I wouldn't say I'm really good with all the characters. But I kind of know how to play them. Let's see. <laughs> I'm definitely not as good with all the characters um, as I am with Velvet and Paprika. I'm a pump main. Yeah, lately there's this meme on my stream where apparently I'm a pump main. Yo, play pump. And people are just memeing it up on the chat right now <laughs> yeah that sounds like something i did similarly i just picked random characters just for fun not to like yeah so and nowadays i i enjoy playing i really enjoy playing all the characters honestly except pom i'm pretty much the opposite of you i play everyone except velvet <laughs> <laughs> i hate i can't with zoners man i can't this is bobsy obviously who said Foxy? Bro, I hate you. Bobsy. I, I said Bobsy. No, no, no. Juancho said Foxy, bro. Get me out uh, of here. Oh, Juancho said Foxy? Man, get me out of here. Oh, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I look like that. Get me out of here. Uh, But I don't know. Like, the reason I started with Velvet, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention, like, Horse Show, but was because I used to main what would be the equivalent of Velvet in that game. Oh, okay, okay. So oh. I it, when I came into the Spider Hurts, she felt really familiar. Okay. Really comfy. Um, uh, all things considered, uh, had it not been for Arizona being a Southern character, I probably would have played Tianhua. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of um, like fighting game ish related stuff. You, uh, yeah. oh wow, I never would have guessed that. Um, you play Lethal League too, right? Yeah, I love Lethal League. I, I really. I, I only played it a little. I, I recently got 
Blaze. Blaze? Yeah, from mm. a friend. Um, it's so good. Blaze is so good. How long have you been playing it? Um, original Lethal League. I started playing it when they were in early access and they didn't have all the characters yet. Um, so I used to watch a lot of Game Grumps and they had this show called Steam Train. And they oh, showed out. Yeah. They showed Lethal League and Steam Train like long, long ago when the game was like very new. And I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. And I started playing it then because of Steam Train. Uh, so I've been playing it for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I remember. Um, I used to stream for my college's um, for my college's esports team. I used to stream fighting games and stuff. And there was this one guy who wouldn't stop talking to me about Lethal League Blades. It's just like, hey, Fox, you should go ahead and play it. Um, mm -hmm. I played it the one time. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's a game. Oh, my God. And I'm not saying that as in, like, oh, man, it sure is a game. That is, like, no, it's something I've mean. never experienced before. It's like Yeah, no, it's very cool. different. <laughs> I... It's so different, but it's so, like, it works so well. And it's so much fun. And like when you first start playing it, or like if you don't know how the game works as an outside observer, it looks like just random stuff happening. And then you start understanding how it works, and you can get really deep into it, and it's really fun. Once Yo, I'm godlike! <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't played Leaf League Blaze before. I want to try I it. I would though. definitely recommend it, especially if you enjoy the first one, because this Leaf League Blaze is basically just an improved version of the original one. What's that game again? Is that the one with the... Uh, with the... Uh, like a guy with a yellow smiley head? Oh, that's Candyman. Yeah, that's the game. Or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a furry, so you know I had to pick Latch immediately. Latch is my favorite. I actually have the Latch plush that they made um, a while ago. They made, a they made 500 Latch. of those. Yes, they made five. They made a very limited run of them, uh, and I main latch, so I was very lucky. I actually didn't buy it myself. I was actually pretty bummed that I couldn't get it, uh, uh, but somebody bought it for me. Like I got it as a gift, and I'm so happy. Nice, <laughs> nice. He's, he's my main. You um, I'm curious. Are there are there tournaments for League League plays? Because like I never looked into the game. Like oh yeah, that. oh yeah, and the competitor players are absolutely insane. I wouldn't even get close to that, them because it's just you can't even play the game <laughs> have you ever um... i i honestly i'm 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 a casual like a, a filthy casual when it comes to lethal league um i just play it with my friends that's, fair. that's about it that's fair um... i'm not I'm, I'm definitely not at the same level i am on fighting careers when it comes to lethal league. <laughs> ah so you admit you're, you're you're pretty good at tfh you're pretty good kid. i I already admitted that like long yeah, ago. I, I, know, I, <laughs> I know. never said I wasn't good at them spinning herds. I know. I know I'm good at them spinning herds. I'm just not top player. As long as. What is this? I don't know. Oh, wait! It picked the wrong word! Dang it! Oh. That's oh so my god. Yeah, I, I saw I picked the word computer. <laughs> oh my god. Definitely would have gotten that one. One of the words was computer, and I, I thought I picked that one. Yikes, my dude! That's not yeah, soap. Big jikes! That is not soap. I am going to take a bath with my bath with my computer after this. I specifically did not want to pick soap. Um, what? What? Oh, what? <laughs> what? Yikes! Oh. I was I was very very confused. nothing clean about computer. <laughs> um, now I'm a little bit curious. Uh, yeah, because you do art and you do music and you do all the other facets of cre uh, creativity that I've seen. But have you ever been interested in doing animation? Yes. Um. I've dabbled that in that a little bit, but I, it's not something I would like to pursue just because it's so like time consuming and hard i i've done a couple like animations that's like a, just fun for fun um with very small stuff um i do have friends who are animators um and actually the reason i got a job as a sound designer was because i have a friend 
who is a producer for a company that does like production for like TV shows, like cartoon, mostly cartoons and video games. Hmm. And she got me like, uh, she she kind of made it easier for me to get into that. Let's say, let's put it that way. But um, that's not to say that I'm not, I guess, skilled enough to be working on that. Cause like, I remember the first work like job I made for them. They were actually really impressed about what I was delivering apparently, which was really funny to me because it didn't feel like much to me. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Um... Oh, real quick, since you're a sound designer and all that, and you mentioned Behringer recently, so I... Yeah. Is it, uh, is it fine if I ask about uh, buying... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm asking Foxy also. <laughs> oh, crap. I, I was going to use your question to take a sec to use the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no. Right, right, go ahead. Right. Go. So, like, I'm thinking about getting a like an audio interface. You mentioned Behringer mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. so I'm like had my eye on Behringer or uh, Focusrite or like that. If you have the money, go for Focusrite. Focusrite. Um, honestly, Focusrite is super good. Really, really, really good. Right uh, now, Behringer, like, yeah. Right now, the prices are. I, I'm looking at the prices uh, th that they. Sorry, let me just type here. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Because I'm noticing the prices are inflated because of the. Yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> the pandemic. The current human malware yeah. situation. Yeah. So I'm like, what? Like, oh, should I probably just wait and get a focus right? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know because, like, at the end of the day, we don't really know how long this is gonna last for, right? Mm, that's true. Uh, I, I, I've been in. I've been meaning to upgrade my sound interface actually, and I've been looking at either Focusrite or there was this other one. I don't remember the name of it that I was looking at, but yeah, the prices are kind of high right now. Annoying. Um, just in general, it's really annoying because I also really want to upgrade like my computer in general. It's like everything is so expensive right now. <laughs> just, just, I'm trying to <laughs> do that old meme. How do you do? Oh, the I'm How do that old my, meme? Yeah. <laughs> mm. With Behringer, it's kind of weird because a lot of people give them like flack because they're so cheap. But uh, in my experience, their quality like is really, really good. Uh, I have yeah, I've been seeing your stuff. Yeah, I've been seeing like reviews online. Like they're saying it's pretty good. It is. Got my really eye good. on one. Like got my eye on one. Like uh, twenty-four bit one. The the main issue with the uh, Behringer is that they allegedly they tend to like copy a lot of the signs, so that's why they're so cheap. Because they don't spend as much money on R&D and whatever. So if you have issues with that, I guess that that's depends on your stance on that, I guess. Oh, what's your opinion on Boya? You know Boya? I don't think I have an opinion on them. I think I know what you're talking about. It's, they do like audio stuff, right? Yeah, like mics, uh, mostly yeah, mics. Yeah. Like I'm using a Boya mic right now, actually. I don't. Uh, I don't really have mic. an opinion. I never tried them, um, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they're all over the place over here in the Philippines. <laughs> Go well, to I think like I went like to... just popular in general. I've seen them around. I just Dang never it. really used them myself or anything. Um, anyway, I think go I've on. heard like their build quality is a little cheaper, so I yeah, it's pretty cheap. But for the price, like yeah. like a road mic, you could get like four or five Boya mics for one road mic. <laughs> yeah, no, but when it comes to microphones as well, there's a lot of stuff that is like really overpriced for, like if we're talking like Blue Yetis and stuff like that, they're not worth it, honestly. Also, they're most of the time they're not the right tool for what people want them for. What's going on there, Foxy? Is that you? Like yeah, you're yeah. banging on your keyboard there. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, 
I needed to get my tablet. Um, you have any, like, uh, you, you should go back to your questions, Foxy. Oh yeah, hey, since give I me... kind of derailed it there. Oh no, 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 you're you're completely fine. Um, let me draw this ice cube. Wait, shoot, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Nice, Foxy. No, no. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> god dang it. Um. Uh... Are there any other games that you like to stream besides um, Lethal League and TFH? I, I, oh, wow, I'm dumb. Um, yeah, so like when I started streaming, I actually was like a TF2 streamer. What class? I haven't streamed that game in quite a while. I, I'm a medic main. I also like playing Scout and uh, Devil Man. And I'm actually really damn good at If that's one thing I can admit I'm really good at, it's TF2. I'm actually really good at TF2. Especially medic. A good How long have I you was, been I was actually, that? I was actually a competitive player on ESEA and shit like that. Oh really? How long? Yeah. Have, how long have you been playing that? TF2? Uh, yeah. since it's went free to play 2007. No, Yikes. 2007 is when it came out. 2012 is when I started playing it more. Yeah, 2012. Uh, so over a. Uh, over a decade worth of almost yeah oh, no you said 2012 sorry not 2012 yeah it's <laughs> uh not quite a decade eight, yet but yeah eight years it's been a while since it's i played eight. tf2 but like all i can say is um sniping's a good job mate <laughs> being good at tf2 is a tall order it is it is so that's why i ha i i want to i don't know i have pride in that because it, it is, and at a competitive level, is a pretty hard game. I don't know, as I've only played like 30 minutes worth of Dream Fortress 2. <laughs> right. Um, I didn't, I actually haven't um, asked too many questions on like the stream but anyway, side of things. Oh, yeah. Um, because you were also asking me like what other games I like to stream. Yeah, yeah. Um, besides that, um, that's that's uh I, I mean I like to stream Lethal League. I recent I like to do like where I stream like different games on the my off days. Like the last game I streamed was Spirit Fair. Uh, which was really good. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I'm trying to think of games I like to stream specifically. Oh Super Animal Royale! I've, I've um, I used to be really game. into Super Animal Royale. I, I actually, to the point where I'm actually an official content creator for Super Animal Royale. But the funny thing is once I they gave me that, uh, the devs gave me like the recognition, I kind of stopped playing it. And I don't know why. It wasn't because I didn't like it or anything. I just kind of stopped playing because I was playing other stuff. And I didn't get back into it until like recently. Hmm. But, um... I would definitely. Oh, sh I can't spell. I would definitely recommend it because it's really fun and it just had like a really big update. It went free to play. So, ye. if you I... guys would like to try it, it's really fun. I've never been too much for Battle Royales, this is like Fortnite and Apex, Apex Legends, but I don't know why. Super, Super Animal Royale is one of those games that I really, really want to try. I'm just scared that if yeah, I get no, into it, same. I'll get too um, into it. Super and like battle royale as a concept has always been very like attractive to me. But whenever I tried to play Apex or um, what's what's uh, Fortnite or whatever, it never really clicked with me. Um, and then when I tried Super Animal Royale, it just like it was I got hooked on immediately. It's really fun. It's really different because first of all, it's 2D. And it's top down, twin stick kind of deal. Like the the aiming is basically twin stick uh, kind of stuff, twin stick shooter. Um, and the game goes by really quick. So like if you lose, you don't lose a lot of time. Which I feel like sometimes in in other battle royale games, if you end up losing, it feels like you wasted your time because the games are can be pretty long. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. Um, in in Super Animal Royale, 
if you lose, it's like, ah, it's no biggie, I'll just queue again, because it doesn't take too long. It doesn't take long to find a game, and it doesn't take long to finish a game. So it's just fun. Um, yeah, it's a it's a nice change of pace from stuff like um, like League of Legends, where it's just like if you lose a game because of some stuff, mm -hmm. um, it's like forty minutes of your life gone. Or what the yeah next? yeah yeah. <laughs> um, like it's not even just forty. Yeah. Sometimes it can be like an hour, depending on how long you spent in queue or how long you've been like yeah. people dodge games. I think that's one of the really nice things uh, Zar did from the get-go, where, like, it takes, like, a minute for a lobby to start a game, and if if the lobby doesn't fill up um, in, how much is it, like, 45 seconds, it just fills the rest of the space with bots, so you always get a game no matter what. <laughs> Which I think Fortnite didn't start adding bots until, like, very recently. I haven't been keeping up with it, honestly. <laughs> and, like, that's the... I think that's one of the weird things. Because, like, conceptually, I enjoy Fortnite. And I enjoy watching people who are good at Fortnite. I enjoy watching them play the game. I think it's really fun. But I could never get into it myself. Hmm. It's fun watching people build stuff. But, yeah, I couldn't... I, yeah, I people who are game. really good, who are actually good at it, are amazing. Oh, I can see why it's that now. Um, speaking of games that you've streamed, uh, I, I can see how, like, you struggle with uh, balancing between art and music and gaming and everything. What? How do you deal... Because from what I understand, you, um, you stream on a schedule, if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, how do you yeah. deal with fatigue? When it comes to that sort of thing like do you ever just like get tired of streaming and if so what do you what do you do about it well when it comes to streaming i've never uh felt tired of, of, of it um the reason i have a schedule is that when when i first started streaming i got so into it that i was doing it like literally every day i did it every day for like a year and i was playing them spiny hurts every single day streaming them spiny hurts every single day for like a year and it came to the point where i'm like you know i'm i'm streaming all the time and i'm not doing all of these other things i want to do so i think i should force myself to have a schedule so i can like do other things and that's why i have a schedule because otherwise i would just stream every day all day Do you, do you find it more tiring to uh, stream a game than it's just to play it casually or... Because like for me, like I could play a game like the whole day, only taking break to eat mm -hmm. and take a shower. But when I stream, I'm like, oh, I can only do this for two hours <laughs> at most. I, I do end up tired at the end of a stream. Um, I wouldn't say I find it hard or I don't enjoy it. I think definitely I could just play a game on... I don't know if if I could play a game longer when it, if I'm not playing it on a stream. I think I can play it longer on a stream even though it tires me more. Because, like, for me, like, the big draw of streaming is, like, the whole social aspect. That's the reason I stream for, uh, even though it definitely makes... Um, my performance in the game itself drop. Um, I don't care because I'm here for for the people, you know, for the interaction. Um, and it does tire me. Yeah, I do end up tired because, like, I have to focus, try to try to focus on both like chat and the game, and try to be entertaining, and that. That takes a toll on your mind. You like um, s avoid certain things like in streaming because like, like like a recent I was like playing a, a bunch of RPGs and mm -hmm. 
like it'll be boring to show people you know, the grinding in it. So are yeah. there things that you would do on a, uh, that you wouldn't or would do on a stream that if you're just playing normally that you would or wouldn't do? Um, well, for example, I think showing like labbing, if we're going through them spine hurts on stream, is boring. It's something I don't want to do on my streams, even though I've done it a couple times. Uh, because I personally find it boring. I know there's a lot of people who love that. I know there's a lot of people who love watching people lab combos and whatever. I don't like watching that. And this goes back to the thing I was talking to earlier about how when it comes to like um, creative endeavors, the one thing I care about, it's making something that I would enjoy. So if I wouldn't enjoy that, I don't, I don't do it. Uh, I've, I've streamed RPGs and stuff that require more grinding, but what I usually do is I do all of the grinding off stream. Yo, that F is kind uh, of Yeah, struggling. that's usually, yeah. Uh, what, <laughs> um, things I would avoid doing it? I don't know. Like, what I've found is that whenever I stream story-driven games, my viewership is, like, way, way lower. Um, so, I don't know. It's weird, because I do want to stream some of those games, and I do stream them. Um. Oh, that's so sad. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the heck is it? <laughs> but oh, is there anything that to... you... Yeah. Sorry, I'm just like, uh, is there stuff that you would do on a stream that you wouldn't on? Like, say for me, I would, like, do a game over just to be curious, like, what it looks like. But if I'm yeah. playing on my own, like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I'm streaming, people sometimes are like, hey, play this class or do this or challenges. Um, I have a thing on my stream where people can redeem channel points for challenges. And obviously, I end up doing things that I definitely would never do if I was just playing on my own. Uh, and I mean, I sometimes do like really dumb or silly stuff just because it's entertaining. You know, like I, it's more entertaining for the viewers. Um, I think, like, even just the fact that I'm talking when I'm playing games or, like, showing any emotion at all as a weird sound. When I'm playing games on my own, I'm not, I don't make sound and I don't really move or anything or talk at all. Um, I'm one of those people who, um, I think thinking out loud is weird and dumb. And I always find it really weird when people do that uh, i always use my inner voice most of the time uh, but when i'm streaming i kind of have to flip it around and i have to be talking and maybe talking about what i'm thinking and stuff like that bruh so like that's the thing i would do on stream that i wouldn't do on my own you know what's one weird thing like um what do you call it like you're saying it's weird that uh You'd be talking on, uh, on screen. Um, wait, am I drawing the correct thing? I'm not yes, sure. Um, what I was saying? Oh yeah, like you're saying, it's weird that people are uh, talk to themselves when they're playing. So I was like, my nephew, he's like seven years old or something, and whenever mm. I see him playing, he's like talking to himself like a streamer would, like. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> now, um, now I feel like the new generation, because they're like a lot of their um, their experiences of games, it's like watching other YouTubers play. So yeah, now I'm seeing it now. Like, why? Why is this kid? That's what they're used talking to talking to himself when he's playing <laughs> like a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I I, I can see that. Um, but like my dad, for example, he's very, he's one of those people who like just talks out, like thinks out loud. And when he's watching something on the TV, he's yelling at the TV, like they can hear him and stuff like that. And I've always found that really weird. And to be honest, kind of annoying. Um, oh, you mean stuff that like, being oh, said, um, 
I don't think it's weird or annoying when somebody is broadcasting because that's kind of the point. Like, I wouldn't... If I go into a stream and, and the streamer is not interacting with the viewers, I'm going to leave immediately. You know? That's fair. Uh, I, I usually have a habit of... um. I play a lot of uh, skill-based games, like a lot of speedrun games mm -hmm. and fighting games. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this is a bad habit of mine and why i don't stream as often as i usually could but sometimes i'll get so into the game itself that i kind of just i swear to god i swear to god no no i hate everything um sometimes i'll get so into the game that i'll forget about everything else and no yeah for sure um when i'm playing games i mean sometimes stuff happens and sometimes you get into it sometimes you're it, when i'm playing this fighting herd sometimes i'm playing against somebody who actually requires my full attention to be able to like play against them and like i'm not saying i'm always talking the entire time because that's not really i actually think i'm really bad at that because i feel like i do a lot of like silence honestly especially when i'm focusing um i think it's 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 one thing that i've always like thought was really funny when i watch my uh, my vods or whatever you can you can really clearly tell when I start thinking or whatever because I start a sentence and then I kind of stop mid sentence <laughs> um, until I get a confirm and as soon as I get a confirm I start talking in like on the same thing but when I'm doing it I'm I'm not even realize that you know hey sometimes you gotta focus during neutral I don't uh, I don't blame you well yeah well the thing is I I know that the viewers also understand but at the same time if if i just if i'm in that mode 100% of the time it's going to be really uh at least in my in my opinion and my personal preferences um skill can only entertain me for so long like i can see you i can see i can only see an arizona do a stump loop so many times before it becomes boring you know like the first couple times they do it is like oh that's cool do you know how to do anything else do you can you entertain me though like in any way like, if I'm talking about watching streams. Because, like, I'm not... Most of the time when I go to a stream, it's not. I'm not there to watch somebody be really good at the video game. I'm just there to hang out. I feel that. And I understand there's people who are there for the skill, and that's cool. And there's content for that people as well, those people as well. But that's not for me. <laughs> hey, I feel that. Um... Wow, we've really been going for an hour. Uh, all right, all right. I have one very, very specific question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. first off, let me stop being dumb. <laughs> yeah, so right. don't mind me. I don't know uh, if that's possible. All right, so you're you're a furry. Uh, I'm assuming uh -huh. just like uh, eighty yeah. percent of us who are in this uh room right now, yeah. who are in this community right now. Uh, I really, really want to ask. Yeah. Why a moose? It's a reindeer. Reindeer. Oh, okay. It's okay. a caribou. Why a reindeer slash caribou? Um, so way, way, way back when I first started like doing furry stuff when I was like 13 or something like that. Um, my first owner was a fox. And then. And then, like, I stopped drawing when I got into college. And then, like, Horse Cartoon Show came out, and that got me back into drawing. And I stopped doing furry stuff because I was drawing horses. <laughs> and um, and then, like, I started meeting a lot, a lot of friends because of the artist community um, for the show. And obviously, a lot of them are furries, and I wanted to do furries again. Um, but I didn't really like identify with a fox anymore. And I'm like, I want to like change my persona. And I had like a bunch of different animals that I was considering, and one of them was deer or reindeer, just because I have always liked those. I've always liked deer. Like, if you go to my art, there's always been like a lot of like deer art i think you showed it even before like velvet even before them fighting herds or anything i was already like i really like deer yeah <clears throat> i i can 
I can see the oh. the ungulate within you. So once the fighting hurts came out and I was doing playing a lot of velvet, um people start calling me deer boy and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? That just like gave me the, the little bit of the push, the extra push to pick deer. Because deer was one of or reindeer was one of the uh animals I, I was considering because I had a, a couple different animals I was considering. Um, that's What else were you I, considering? I hope. I don't really. I was considering like husky or um, secretary bird and stuff like that. I don't know. Oh. I hope this question doesn't like uh, uh, like if you don't want to share it where your location is like is there any moose or deer in the wild in your area? Yeah, um, actually here in, well, I live in Mexico. I live in the northern part of Mexico, the state of Sonora. Um, oh, and um, dogs, in this He's state, been dropped, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows. Uh, I, I would say most of my community knows the exact city I live in, so I thought. Like news. Um, but anyway, in this state, uh, beer is a very important part of like the local culture uh and it was a big part of the um mythology of of the natives from this parts of of mexico you don't get moose um, or i think no we don't there, get right? moose they're more uh, of a the northern desert. i'm i'm in the yeah. desert part of mexico um we don't they're get probably moose here. die of heat stroke <laughs> or something uh we do oh, get a lot of deer no, um so if, if you come to our state, like literally the state uh, flag or symbol is a deer or it's like a person doing like the deer dance, which is like a, a ritual of the cultures that live here originally. Mm. Uh, I just want to take a moment to shout out uh, Zelkip for the little raid that we got. <laughs> hey, thanks for the raid. Thank you for raiding us. What is this? I looked away from the game for a couple seconds and now I don't know where we are. Yeah. Oh. I'm trying to think, is there a... So... Oh no, wait, you already answered that. I was gonna ask if your um, affinity for reindeer was what got you uh, in it for Velvet. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> oh, uh... I know this has happened for a couple of other people, but um, mm -hmm. I know for most people, th this is just me asking as a fighting game player, but I know for most people mm -hmm. TFH was what got them into fighting games, and mm -hmm. then they started mm -hmm. spreading off into things like uh, Blaze Blue, and I know a lot of us have been playing Guilty Gear ever since one of the rollback patches for that came out. Has, um, mm -hmm. has TFH been a gateway drug for you for getting into any other sort of... Um, more traditional or anime-based fighting game, like Skullgirls or something? I used to play Skullgirls before playing the Spiny Herds. Ooh. <laughs> I wasn't as good at Skullgirls as I am the Spiny Herds, but I used to play it, um, and I really enjoy it. Um, I would say, though... Well, it's, it's weird, because, like, I... Um, I guess I need to type this. I know what it is, but I'm not focusing in this game. I'm an idiot. So, conceptually, as an idea, as a concept, fighting games has always been something I enjoy. Um, I find them really interesting. Um, I've always done. I would never really play them too much. When I was a kid, when I got my SNES for Christmas way, way back when the SNES came out, uh, one of the games I got was Street Fighter 2, originally. Ooh. I still have that cartridge. So I used to play a lot of Street Fighters too when I was a kid. Um, so now we know, basically know how old you are. <laughs> oh, I'm 30 years old if you want to know. Hey. Still um, younger than me, sad face. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, I have no problem with people knowing my age. <laughs> but I, I guess I guess we can all agree that um, Street Fighter 2 on the SNES is not the best version of the game. Uh. I haven't... I was, um... 
like while Street Fighter wasn't my first game, I think my first mm-hmm. uh, introduction to the series was actually um. Well, I had already I had always been into fighting games, but the first Street Fighter that I actually like really played and got into was uh, Third Strike. Oh, I've never played Third Strike. It looks really cool. It's it's fun. It's fun. It's a bit to learn, but it's super fun. I know for most people, they're uh, what is that? Oh, okay. Uh, I know for most people, <laughs> the their introduction to the series was uh, Street Fighter Four because it was so popular. Yeah. And Street Fighter Five yeah. seems to be the hotness today, but I um, I love. The pixel style games like uh blaze yeah. blue guilty gear undernight um so street fighter third strike really like reached out and took me by the neck that game was super good yeah um are there any yeah uh, i don't know, I don't know. Like, oh sorry oh no oh, oh no go ahead go ahead well, I was just gonna keep going with the fighting game stuff. Um, I never really got into it. I I played it because I had it. That was the game I had. Um, I did enjoy it, but I was a little kid and I never tried to like get good at it or got really into it. Um, it was just a game I had and I played with my friends. Fair um, enough. Then I got the art of fighting through the SNES as well, and I used to play Fatal Fury with a friend who owned that game. Um. But then, like, once I got, like, newer systems, like the N64 and GameCube and whatnot, I never really played those games again. Because, again, I wasn't, like, super into them. It was just games I had that were kind of fun to play with my friends. Uh, And I never really got really into fighting games. What do you mean if... Oh, (laughs) I get what you mean. Um, (laughs) Took me a second. Um... (laughs) But, I mean, besides Smash Brothers, but again, it was just something I would play with my friends. And that was it. Um, but then, when I got, uh, again, going back to the, to the horses, I, uh, I got in the horse fandom, and at some point, um, the game comes out. The previous game, um, and I really got into that game. I used to play it actively all the way until since Fighting Hearts release on Early Access. I was still playing that game actively. Um, and I spent a lot of time in that game and I really enjoyed it. I would like to think I was decent at it. I wouldn't say I was really good, uh, but it was really fun. And I made a lot of friends playing that game. Yeah. Um, oh, so just real like, so you're one of the backers, right? I mean, of course, yeah, you said I'm one of the backers or... for uh, Fighting Hearts. And it's exactly anyone in that. this chat who's not a backer. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch Me. of people oh. that were no backers. <laughs> I didn't know this game existed. If I did, I would have been a backer. I was too young. Um, I actually um, wouldn't give me her credit yeah. card. <laughs> 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 I still feel really um, upset about the fact that I couldn't um, pledge more money to the game. I wanted to pledge more money, but I couldn't because I, I was pretty broke back then. Um, so nowadays, I try to like give in any way I can support. I'm curious. Uh, you said um, you had went to college. What did you uh, What did you go to college for? I went for um, music with the fucking uh, specialty in execution. Like not execution, performing is the word. Okay. Which, I guess. Um, and I did a little bit of like. Um, music engineering but that's not what i was focusing on and uh and the focus was on contemporary music so it was stuff like jazz and funk and rock and all of that Mm -hmm. Uh, before college i did go to another school where i studied classical music as well um so i have like both both experiences i guess and the knowledge from both um things so a lot of your academic focus is in music. Music. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, we're coming up to round ten, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna cut the game off and get to our announcements at round ten. But uh, this is kind of a bigger question uh, from our last one. Um. Mm-hmm. So, do you have any advice 
before the creative types in the world and i'm gonna ask this in what is he doing what is that um <laughs> do you have any advice for people who one want to do art two want to do music three want to do streaming and four just want to do everything i don't know um don't be like me because i suffer a lot <laughs> <laughs> i don't know um if if it comes specifically to streaming because like that's that's something that happens sometimes when people ask me like hey i want to start streaming and whatever but i don't have x y or z like i don't have like overlays i don't have whatever fancy thing um and you know my advice when it comes to streaming is like just just do it um and you will learn but if you don't have a good internet connection <laughs> yeah that's like it me. that's <laughs> That's the, the one thing you do need to have. Um, so, like, going to that point, which I was going to go into that. Um, so, like, streaming was something I've always... I always wanted to do for a long, 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 long time. And I couldn't do it because we didn't have, like, good internet at all. And I couldn't afford anything better myself. Um, and then around 2018, 2017, I was finally able to afford my own thing. So I got it, and I immediately went for it. I didn't even, like, think of it, about it. I didn't hesitate at all. I just went for it, um, and I started streaming. And if you go and look at, like, my old stream videos or whatever, because, like, I know a lot of people, like, really like my my current, like, overlay, and I have, a, like, um, I have a lot of really fancy automation on my stream and stuff like that, but... <clears throat> that's more recent, you know? Like, when I started streaming, I didn't really have anything fancy, and people were still coming in, and people were still staying, and people were still, like, <clears throat> um, following and whatever. And when it comes to streaming, the important thing is just to be entertaining in any sort of way. You don't have to be funny. You don't have to be good at the game. You just have to have something that is entertaining to someone, and you just have to enjoy yourself. Right. And um, and you'll you'll pick up like the more advanced stuff over time, and maybe you'll upgrade as the time goes by. Um, I guess like one thing that really helped me though, which I don't know if this invalidates my point at all. I don't think it does. But one thing that really helped me was that since I studied music and whatever and sound design, I already had like decent microphones i already had like sound interface and all of that so for me i didn't have to invest a lot of money into that stuff but like there's people who stream with like headset microphones and maybe it's not the best sound quality but they're they're entertaining they're fun to watch and people follow them you know like so when it comes to like hardware like gear don't worry about that um if you want to start streaming and you think you don't have like or you need like fancy gear, you don't. Just just go for it. Um, the other thing that people sometimes tell me is like they're afraid they're gonna mess up or something. And it's like I messed up so much. I mess up all the time. But like, you're not gonna be good from the get go. And I guess this applies to anything like music, art, streaming. You just have to go for it, and you learn over time. And when it comes to streaming, like when you mess up, that's sometimes like the best content, like the most fun content when the streamer messes up so there's no like downside to it honestly yeah uh, i feel like the fear of like not being good at something i i, I found it the most um prevalent for fighting yeah. games like a lot of people will avoid the fighting games it's, oh. <laughs> like me i'm like recently i'm like uh i'm i'm not enjoying myself <laughs> but like art yeah, like... i used to be like that but then I got over it, so... Um, but yeah, it like, it seems art? like fighting games is the most... I feel like it's way, way worse in fighting games than it is for art or music. Yeah, uh, when it comes to art, I don't know, because I find myself not really... Like I said, I, I find it really frustrating myself. Um, and the reason I do it, it's not... Uh, how real can I get in here? <laughs> how real? How real? As long as it's... The, uh, I, I've talked about this. As long as it's as not... Um... PG or something? I guess like <laughs> mental health stuff. Um, 
As long as it's not disturbing, it should be. I. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Got it. Uh, yeah. As long as it's so, not um, disturbing. So one of the main reasons I I do or did or still do art. Um. Well, I'm a very depressive person, which maybe comes to us as a surprise to a lot of people. Um. And over time, I found out that when I was producing art, like creative stuff and mostly art, it would help me with that. Uh, over time, I started realizing that whenever I wasn't creating something, I would go into these really like all um, place mentally. Um, and I would go into this really awful, like depressive state. Um, so it wasn't it's not a it wasn't a matter of i want to make art it was more a matter i have to make stuff you know so yeah i don't know <laughs> it's kind of weird who's the one who's the, uh on the fighting fanatic chat by the way who's that who's using the user <laughs> sorry um on twitch that could be me i only used it once if 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 there's if they're asking who it is in the uh, in the chat, it's me. I've I've been just following the stream for a little bit. Hi five. Hey, what's up? Hello five five five. From the I'm just comments. wondering why why aren't you? I'm just wondering why aren't you in here? But like in yeah. Because of... oh, yeah, I didn't want to. I wanted y'all to have have fun. I didn't like. I've I've had my time. You know, I've I've had my time to talk and to do all of that. But I wanted Enma. To to shine i wanted foxy <laughs> and you rich and zale to to have your time to talk all right we got you we're, we're finishing up this um last this round, the last round. Of, of scriblio well, before no. yeah. i get into some uh special announcements yeah yep uh, i don't know um when it comes to like advice for other types of things that are not like streaming or video i find it harder to give because i think i'm not the i'm not the right person to ask for that honestly um i don't think i have any advice because i haven't figured anything out myself <laughs> fair enough fair enough um and in terms of music uh like learning instruments and stuff this would honestly this would probably be a personal question just because like as yeah. i said earlier i'm trying to learn guitar and everything and yeah um is there anything that I should keep in mind for the future in terms of, like, learning that sort of thing? Well, I think when it comes to, like, playing instruments specifically, it really depends on what your goal is. If you just, if you want to learn music, because you want to, like, actually learn music. And by I mean like that, it's like, you can, like, sight read stuff, and you can make your own music, and you want to improvise, and you want to, like, do music. Or if you just want to play the guitar and all you want to do is play songs that you know and that you like and that's all you want to do. And there's nothing wrong with either one. Like, there's nothing wrong with getting a guitar just because you want to play the music you like and that's it. And you don't want to bother, like, learning music. There's nothing wrong with that. So, like, it really depends on what your goal is. Like, do you want which of those two things you want? Fair enough. All right. Um... But I think the, the most important advice I think I can give that applies more generally when it comes to learning an instrument is um, it is better to practice 10 minutes every day than practicing three hours every like five days. Like you're going to get way more improvement and more like consistency of doing that than just bench practicing. Like, oh, I haven't practiced in a month. Let me like practice for like seven hours today and then I don't touch the instrument again for a week uh you're gonna get more improvement out of if you practice like 15 minutes every day yeah um, I, you shoot even with my like limited well of knowledge in terms of like drawing streaming and music it's uh it, it's a lot better to practice with the consistency thing that's where you get uh yeah. most of your improvement and that's uh that's like a, a thing that i think also helped me with them spine herds um, I applied a lot when it comes to execution, mostly like mechanical stuff. I applied a lot of the philosophy and like the things I learned in school about like learning instruments to learning the mechanical aspect of fighting herds. 
and learning combos and learning like more difficult moves where I would literally practice like a thing for like maybe 20 minutes, just one thing. Yeah. Um, even though it's boring, but I was doing it every day. I would set up like a little clock and I would practice like a specific move for 20 minutes. And then once the 20 minutes was over, I would do something. You know, one of the things and, yeah. that I noticed, one of the odd things that I noticed mm -hmm. was um before I started playing guitar, um mm -hmm. my inputs would be like they were they were okay on a scale of 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. I'd say like my input game was like a 6 uh, and like mm -hmm. my input consistency was all right. But when I started playing guitar and I started having like focus on uh, how I moved my fretting hand as well as like mm -hmm. my strumming hand, my mm -hmm. I guess you could say like my dexterity increased a little and uh, things just started to become cleaner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think it helps a lot because it's like when you play instruments, when you actually like receive proper. Um, teaching or you research how to do it properly yourself which is a little harder um you learn that a lot of it is about economy of movement and being very efficient with your movements which also like translated a lot on the way i do my inputs when i'm playing fighting games uh and i think it also it helped me like a lot <clears throat> it makes sense um yeah i have no tall i i i really don't like you know like rhythm games and all of that because you know they're repetitive movements so i guess that's why i'm not very good at music or fighting games <laughs> I... <laughs> oh my who said knuckles why <laughs> <laughs> here i come rougher than knuckles oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> Oh, man. man, that's so weird, like that oh no thing. Like, I didn't understand so where it was weird. from until like way in, in the future because I played the Japanese version growing up of that game. <laughs> oh. So I never knew. I never knew where it, oh, yeah, what the, it was about. Oh no. The sound design of the, yeah, oh, no. uh, the sound design of the US version is what I like to call a solar travesty. I like to imagine that when you play Sonic and Knuckles and you do that ridiculously easy Knuckles boss fight in Hidden Palace, every yeah. time you hit him, he says, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure like in speedruns they do it too, because there's no way to make that fight any any better other than just hit him every time. <laughs> he just falls. So I'm pretty sure they always go, oh no, in, in audience. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I think... Last round. Oh, this, this is it? This is the last one? Yeah, this is it. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, I, I genuinely ran out, of ran out of talking points. What the? Is that it? Yeah. Bruh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, our artist skills is definitely needed for that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But um, I, I really kind of want to see who wins this one um so are we closing this out uh yeah i think we're gonna start closing it out uh I... oh. you have any Close projects you want to promote uh, uh people whoever before uh foxy makes announcements i guess um you got well, any I'll, I'll actually yeah. give a show throw out a shout out of promotion so just uh we had a raid earlier from zelkip who was running glue cup so Blue Cup is still doing a good job of trying to have beginner tournaments for newer players. They're trying to always figure out a system where if you're a newer player and you're hesitant to, to try and uh, perform at tournaments where there's a lot of killers, Blue Cup is designed to be more beginner friendly. It tries to, to weed out stronger players and not let them participate if they're strong to begin with. And if you end up winning Blue Cup over and over, you kind of get aged out over time. So they're doing a good job, and we just recently had, I don't remember which number the glue cup it was. I think it was a pushover in Salient Blue in Grand Finals. So congrats to them, and just want to promote that. So that's my piece. Maybe I should nice. join the glue cup. They're fun. <laughs> well, I haven't watched any, but I've, uh, I've seen a couple, and they are pretty fun. Let me find something real quick. There we go. All right. 
So in the link to the chat, I'm going to put the, um, what is that? Yeah, what is that indeed? <laughs> oh, oops. Dude, how do I do this? Uh, this should be easier. Please tell me to play this game. I'm so confused, but, um, I, I want to say, I want to give a big shout out and uh, thank you to uh, Enma for agreeing to be on the stream with us <laughs> this time around. Please stop, thank Foxy. Thank you for having me, honestly. Thank you for having me. Hmm? I was really surprised and I was really um, flattered that you guys wanted to have me, <laughs> honestly. Of course, of course. You've, uh, you've, you've been big in our community and like you've done a lot for us. Um, th this is just like one of the few ways that we can like thank you and show you off and put you on display i uh, think um i mean you guys have always been pretty nice to me and i, I appreciate it <laughs> it's a lovely place out of uh, most of the fgc communities this place is uh definitely one of the most lovely well, yeah I, no for sure it's like a small family that's what i always tell people who are new to the game too <laughs> Like, this game is, like, the community is super friendly. Oh. It's really nice. And usually people are, like, if you're a New York player and whatever, I, I, from what I can tell, like, most people are always, like, willing to help you if you ask for help. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, use this time to uh, promote your uh, stuff and uh, your Twitter, your uh, mm -hmm. Twitch, or all that. Hold on. Or any upcoming projects that you want to uh, highlight or anything? I don't think I have any like upcoming projects like really planned out, but I, I mean, I stream here on Twitch on my channel that um, five already post in there. Um, I'll be streaming actually after this. Uh, I stream Them's Fighting Herds Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So if you guys want to watch Them's Fighting Herds and want to hang out with me and like, my community is really, really nice. So definitely check it out. Um, I'm starting to try to do some more YouTube stuff lately. So you can check my YouTube. Um, and um, I do Twitter, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Um... um Oh man, if I we so had a card that had Twitter. all the different social media, but I was only thinking about Yeah, that. I gave you guys that. Um, uh, um Hold on. Let me see. I if have I my can streamer links here. Second. Right there, uh there's a bunch of my different links to my different social media places in that link. If you guys want to check that out. Um yeah, that, that one didn't get shown. So what's what was the link oh, that you, you tried to send? Hold on, I'll post it here on the stream. Uh, give yeah, me one been... second, and there it is. Hold up. Uh, you had it for a moment there. Hold up, I'm, uh, I'm about you to show it. you guys I how just posted like it. I, I just posted it on the Discord. If you guys can, uh, yeah, I got it. Post it for me. There you go. Right. Um. Yeah. Like I stream it around, um, 5 p.m. my time, uh, which is. UTC minus seven, so that would be in about two, no, in about an hour or an hour and twenty minutes actually. Give me so just if you guys, one if any of you have never been to my streams and I sound at all like something you would enjoy, uh, feel free to show up and see if you like it or not. And if you don't like it, that's cool. <laughs> I, obviously, I, I'm biased because we had them on Fighting Fanatics, but I, I can vouch for Enma being really energetic, like usually on stream, and they'll interact with you, like they do streamer matches with a uh, or with a uh, chat. So, yeah. Right. So I have a, a queue system on my stream. You can uh, just join the queue, and I'll play with you. I'll play sets with the people from the queue, and sometimes I do uh, just uh, match commentary and stuff. Just whatever we need. Whatever we feel like doing. Uh, I try to be energetic and I try to talk and whatever. I can't always do it, but I certainly try. <laughs> oh yeah, it's hard to keep up the energy forever. Yeah. All right, I got the, with a, with a little bit of godlike stream prowess, I got uh, all of Enma's links up. There you go. <laughs> there you there go. It is. 
There's the there's the moose himself. I mean, uh, caribou. caribou. By uh, the way, that T-shirt in that drawing is the thing you can actually buy from my Redbubble. <laughs> <laughs> actual merch. See, and then here they are trying to say that they're not like some godlike streamer, but they have actual merch on deck. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look my name up on Redbubble, you'll find a t-shirt and some other stuff I sell. No Patreon or something? <laughs> I don't have a pa I used to have a Patreon um way back, but I felt like I wasn't delivering enough. Uh I guess not so much enough, but I wasn't being consistent enough, so I felt bad about having it, so I just closed it. Uh if any if anyone would like to support me in any way, like the best way you can do it, honestly, is just like watch my stuff my content and if you think you know people who would enjoy it and share it with them that's like the absolute best thing you can do uh if you would like for some reason to support me with more like a monetary way um there's links on uh twitch for donations uh if you would like to do that and uh, i have a cof coffee 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 coffee, <laughs> coffee. Oh, yeah. to, to help out is it mocha where you can donate as well um i can post a link here i guess on the is Discord it mocha i'm not gonna be able to post it on on the stream um oh, Zale is yeah. coffee obsessed <laughs> <laughs> yeah coffee. i love my mocha coffee all right uh but yeah uh you can also i guess uh i had a a merch store on etsy where i sell like a lot of stickers and stuff like that but unfortunately due to the lockdown and the borders being closed, I can't do any of that right now. Um, oh, you can't I get actually, to your like your your post box that you I have. I can't get like, to my PO box. Oh, and I can't that sucks. Stuff oh I can't man. No. SPS. Yeah. Cannot uh, which cross really the sucks border. Because like I that actually is like really really bad for me right now. That, because yeah, earlier I can this year, um, my fight stick broke, so I I'm I all of this year I've been using a faulty stick, which is really annoying, and um. That's like Otto John's for like if he loses. <laughs> well, I try to not. No, I know, that, I know. But it definitely, <laughs> I know. it definitely well, affects it's real, my, my performance. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, but I mean, whatever. I, it, it is very frustrating. Um, and the the thing that really annoys me is that Focus Attack won't ship to Mexico because that's what I usually buy from. Are there any but alternatives or no? As far as I've seen, there's not really any. I I went to eBay. Um. And I saw a couple of retailers outside the U.S., but they wouldn't ship to my address. Anything I find, I haven't been able to find anyone who would ship to, like, my location. So it's really annoying. We can only hope that things open up soon, <laughs> then. But yeah, I don't know. Don't know about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. But... Five, buy one of his shirts. And <laughs> when we meet him in the future, you know, I like, actually, hey, yeah, um... I got it. <laughs> Paint, I'll paint it. I'll paint the velvet blue or something. If, oh if that God. wasn't, um, if that wasn't like, if COVID wasn't a thing, I would promote my Etsy. Um, that that, uh, drawing on the T-shirt in the drawing, I made stickers of that. Um, I'm sure probably a bunch of you got some because those sold out. Like, that's my that was my most popular popular thing I've ever put up on Etsy. It sold out in less than a day, and I made the money back in less than a day that I spent Ooh. on making them. And I've never yes. had any other product like be that successful. And I would love to restock it, but I can't. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, well, maybe we'll be able to get back to being able to restock that, you know, when, when things change. Soon. So I'd say Foxy, uh, I'd say last thing to promote, uh, commission this man. You, may, uh, you saw the work that I <laughs> that I put up earlier for the little slideshow, but this man makes some really really good stuff. If you can, uh, maybe maybe consider commissioning him. Yeah, that's good work. <laughs> for sure, support artists, direct commissions, and all that. Uh, Foxy, go ahead and do the uh, the spiel oh, yeah, for okay. our. Yep. So we have a couple of announcements for the final tournament of the Magic Series Circuit TMS number eight. So first thing that I want to say. The deadline to sign up it comes in three or four days. The last day to sign up is November twenty fifth, twenty twenty. What time is it exactly? Uh, so that's, that's this coming Wednesday at ten p.m. U.S. Eastern. Ten p.m. This is the last chance that you'll be able to have to sign up for the tournament, and this tournament is the last chance that you'll be able to have to get your rank up to 
qualify for the TMS finale. And I gotta say, if you can try to be in the TMS finale, that's where you want to be because we got some really, really, really good prizes there. Uh, switching over to the prizes for TMS number 8, we have a little bit of support from main 6 yet again. Similar to how we did for TMS number 4, we have merch prizes coming in for coming in hot for TMS number 8. Uh, for first place, we have 3 t-shirts and a character pin of your choice, and this time, the character pin that you can choose can also be Shanty. Uh, additionally, we have... I'm pretty sure we have a little bit of extra money to give away. First place is going to also get $100. Uh, that sweet, sweet sh money for you to possibly buy another t-shirt. Uh, in second place, there will be two t-shirts and one character pin, also able to choose from Shanty. And uh, I didn't mention this before, but the t-shirts... You can also choose from the three new shirts that uh, Main6 has up on their website. Uh, in third place, you have one t-shirt and one character pin and $30 from Fight Fanatics. Second place is 55. Fourth through eighth, get a character pin. Uh, and fourth place gets $15. Uh, for everybody who signs up, if you're a verified participant, um, enter a giveaway for a free Shanty key whenever she gets released. Shanty is, of course, not going to be free, but uh, Main6 hasn't said how much she's going to cost yet. But if you want to bypass that cost, uh, participate in the tournament and you'll have a chance to win her when she comes out. Uh, for everybody who watches the stream, we'll also be having a giveaway for game keys for them fighting herds. If it's a game that you've been wanting to get into, stick around, watch, you might get it. Or if it's, it's a game that you already own, um, you might be able to chill a code out to a friend or something. Uh, and keep in mind, too, that those those two giveaways, if you are both a tournament participant and you're watching the stream, those are not mutually exclusive. You can win both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can get the free shanty key and also a game key. Obviously, if you're a participant, you have the game, so you'll end up giving it away. But, right, right. you know, that's still, still good stuff. Um... Oh yeah, and giving it to a friend, uh, I know the people who backed for TFH to a certain tier will already have a Shanty Key, but if you've backed and you win a Shanty Key from being a tourney participant, you can still give that code to a friend. Now, for the TMS finale, this is, this is, yeah baby, this is what, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what it's all about. Um, so, the prizes are bulked up quite a ton. Um, prize money has been bulked up thanks to Five by Five, Keat, and a little bit of our a little bit of help from our friends at Main Six. So for first place, you will get a grand two hundred schmackaroos. Second place, sorry, our great runner up is going to get one hundred and twenty five dollars. Third place is going to get eighty five dollars, and fourth place is going to get sixty dollars. But since this is our big tournament, we've extended the prizes down from 4th place, what was originally 4th place, to 8th place. 5th and 6th place, I mean, uh, the 5th place tie is going to get $35, and the 7th place tie is going to get $15. But, the prizes don't stop there. Um, so, I'll save, I'll save my tiny announcement for last, but uh, I, I just want to confirm with Rich. Uh, there also seems to be a custom uh, fight stick giveaway that we will be doing with, in collaboration with uh, Rich Jammer for one of the lucky tournament participants. Uh, Rich, if you have anything you want to say about that? Uh, it doesn't have to be a fight, it can be a uh, mix box or, or, what's the other one? Hitbox? Hitbox. Hitbox. Yeah, yeah. The, com the common ones that you can put art on that are like really customizable are fight sticks, hitboxes, or mix boxes. Technically, you could get like a really swanky pad too from various pad producers, but the ones that when when it comes to like accuracy and high cost, fight stick, hitbox, mix box are the ones that you want to go for. Okay. Oh, uh, and to answer Otter's question, the the two hundred dollars down and all the way to top eight and the hitbox giveaway slash mix box slash fight stick giveaway, those are all for the finale. Uh, the stuff with merch is for TMS number eight. And the last prize that I want to talk about is um something that I've worked. I'm working with main six and a couple of artists in the TFH community uh, on getting to you guys. So, uh, for one very, very lucky participant in the TMS finale, 
uh, we'll be doing a giveaway and the winner of that giveaway will receive an art pack from a couple of different artists in the TFH community. Uh, I slash we will be paying for these commissions and once once the winner is confirmed, they can simply tell the artists uh, whatever it is that they want. So just to uh, spoil you guys with a little bit of who we've come up with uh, for help for this. Um, and to let you guys... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Foxy. Since we... I, I'd rather you not, like, reveal any specific artists on that until we have it, like, finalized. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 I know. I know it's nice to like have an idea, but like, like for for now, let's let's just uh keep that one on the back burner. So once we have it finalized, then we'll we'll announce the the selected artist. Um, I, I do I do think there is one artist that um, I do think there is one artist that we've selected that uh I'm I'm pretty sure we'll be able to uh confirm and get in on it. Well, what I'm saying is, are they going? have we determined they are going to be the artist or are they just one of the people that could do it no no no. it's it's not going to be only one artist it's going to be on multiple artists it's, it's oh like... right i guess i keep forgetting how this is supposed to work out <laughs> it, all, right, all right all right we'll go ahead if you have some confirmed as long as they're confirmed all right all right one artist that we've confirmed for this is the one the only ogara so all right so Algara has been putting out tons of stuff for a long time. I think they go by Skyify or Skyrefire Sky now. Skyfire, yeah. Yeah, just with some like weird letters and stuff, but previously known as Ogara. Uh they're from across the pond over there. You can see them a lot over in the Fauna server. So they they do a lot of good Oleander work in game and they do a lot of good artwork outside of game. Mm -hmm. Um I can't reveal or too a stick many... there. Oh, go ahead. For a second there, I thought you were going to say it was Enma or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we're still getting the uh, the rest of the artists together on that, but um, all I will say is that some of the artists I have asked have shown interest in it. It's just a matter of who we can get in on it for sure. But one of the confirmed artists is Ogar. So if you would like to, if you'd like to enter in for an art pack featuring a commission from Ogara and, and a couple of different artists in the TFH community. You got to be in that. Uh, you got to be in that TMS finale. The only way to get yeah. in that TMS finale is to uh, put yourself in for number eight. It's a little chain of events that we've got going on. We really, yeah, both really hope to see you there. Both raffles are for qualified tournament participants only. Yeah. But um, I think that's about it. Uh, we don't, yeah, 32, the, the finals is top 32. It, it used to be top 16, but we've opened it up, uh, to have a lot more space, to have a lot more fun. It's, it's going to be a really nice tournament. It's going to be really big. A lot of high level players, anything can happen. Um, I think that's it. Uh, is there anything, uh, that I'm forgetting, Cloud? I believe that is it. So you could probably go ahead and end the stream here. Alrighty, um, yeah, that, that seems to be everything. Thank you guys all for coming in. Thank you everyone who played Scriblio for us. Thank you to Zale555 for showing up and Rich for showing up. And another big, big thank you to our guest and Madare for hopping in uh, and being uh, with us for this. I no will, well, we will all see you guys next week for the final tournament of this circuit before the finale. I yep, you see you all next week. For TMS 2020 number eight, thank everybody for coming out. Hope you have been keeping up with your training. See you later, everyone. <laughs> have a good day. Bye.